What's up and welcome to our youth service. We are so glad that you're joining with us. From wherever you are watching this, we are so glad that we can gather together virtually and we can be a part of what God has for us. Now you're gonna see a message in a few minutes and then after that, there's some discussion questions that you can either talk with, talk about with the people around you or you can just journal about yourself. We're really excited about what God is gonna do through this message in you. Thanks a lot for joining us. Hey, my name is Griffin. We are so glad that you found this video wherever you're at, praying, believing that it encourages you in your faith and brings you a little bit further to where God wants you to be in your life. We are beginning a new series called What is Love? And in this first part of the series, we're gonna be discovering together, what does it mean to love yourself? In other words, loving yourself I believe could be clearly defined as seeing yourself for who you really are. And don't get it twisted. It does not start in how our culture talks about loving yourself, which might be painted as self-care, only thinking about your needs. This is, this is not where this conversation, this message is going to be going. So hopefully you're leaned in, you're ready to hear from God and what he has to say about how you can receive his love love yourself, and see who you are in him more clearly. Let's pray together. Jesus, we're just so grateful for these minutes and these moments that we get to share together, even through a screen, God, believing that you can speak to us and that there's something powerful that happens when we listen and make space for hearing what you have to say about our lives, God. So we pray all of these things in your name. Amen. I can't help myself but wonder, even just right now, um, that there's probably somebody watching this right now who has a distorted self-image, meaning that you cannot see yourself clearly because somewhere along the way, there is someone or something that has spoken into the internal narrative that you have going on inside of you that only you and God could hear that has disrupted a clear view of how God created you of how he formed you. And our hope for today's message is that you could walk away feeling a sense of confidence, feeling a sense of courage to walk into the call that God has in your life, and ultimately that you could love yourself in the same way that God has loved you so that you may in return love him and love other people. But I believe that there are a few hurdles that are gonna be in your way. There's going to be a a few obstacles that are going to get in your way and and repairing and restoring the broken um, image that you have of yourself. And it's incredibly difficult, I think. And I just have have compassion for you because we live in a society and a time in human history where it is so incredibly easy to have a distorted self-image to see yourself maybe the way that that social media has put up a standard for you, for your beauty or or for things that you need to achieve. Or maybe you feel this pressure to be something that you're really not in order to please your parents, in order to please your teachers, in order to please your friends. And thinking that God can release you from that pressure. But I can only imagine how many of you are struggling with that. And one of the greatest hurdles, I believe, that is in your way in getting the healing that you need to repair your self-image so that you may walk into the call of God in your life is narcissism. You probably didn't see that coming, <laughs> but it's narcissism. It's a distorted mirror. It's a distorted way of seeing yourself. In the tragedy of Narcissus, a Greek, a Greek uh, mythology story, It tells of this God who was so caught up in himself that he actually lost himself. He actually died being caught up in his reflection and and was so obsessed with with his appearance that he actually was just stuck there and died. And I think that's a great representation of what it means to be not self caring, but self-obsessed. 
obsessed with your needs, obsessed with how you are lo looking, how you're perceived by other people. And this is going to be one of the, the, the most overwhelmingly uh, big, large challenges that you have in your life is getting outside of yourself and, and putting your needs, uh, actually not, not becoming obsessed with them, but, but needing, realizing that I need to take care of myself, but, but I, I don't need to be caught up only in my own desires and needs all the time. And maybe I just ask yourself the question right now is like, when you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you see? Every morning when you wake up, what is the first thing that you think when you see yourself? And probably right now, as I'm even mentioning that, there's a critique going on in your mind. There's something about your appearance that, that you criticize. There's something about your personality that you wish wasn't there. Maybe there is even something in your story that you wish it just didn't happen, and it happened, and it was messy, and it hurt, and it was difficult. But you've come to this point where you've just defined yourself by all of these things. And, and when you look at yourself in the mirror, that is all that you see. And you're missing out on the beauty around you and the world that God has created and the purposes that he has for your life because you're so caught up in what is in that mirror staring right back at you. I, um, I think to give a good example because of, of self-care versus self-obsession and, and in this conversation around loving yourself is, is working out. Because there really are only two types of people that work out. There is the person that works out only so that they can look like Thor or look like Captain America or look amazing and for ha to have other people just see them and be like, they got it going on. And to feel good about themselves in that way and, and to puff up their pride. Or there is the person who knows that I, I have to work out and eat correctly and eat in a healthy way and live a healthy lifestyle so that I can take care of myself so I have what I need to have the energy to go out and live the life that God has called me to. Those are two very different things. Being self-obsessed and, and self-focused and, and then taking care of yourself. It's a fine line. And it's, it can kind of be sneaky and creeping up on you, narcissism. It's so easy to get caught up in. And I, I, I just, I wonder what it's going to take for you. I wonder what it's going to take for you to start seeing yourself the way that, that God sees you. And you're never going to overcome this hurdle in your life. And you're never going to overcome all the false narratives that you have built and instilled inside of you until you allow for God to speak into those places of brokenness, until you allow God to actually go inside of you and recreate the narrative that is filled with hope, that is filled with faith, that is filled with love. We want nothing more for you than to recreate that narrative inside of you so that you cannot live selfishly but live a selfless life. So the first hurdle is narcissism. It's a distorted mirror. It's going gonna, it's gonna to distract you from the call of God in your life. But the second thing is this, and I think this is even more important. It's shame. It's shame. I want to tell you a story in Zechariah 3. I think this is going to speak to you. And it gives us this picture, this, this scene it sets us inside of. In chapter 3 it says this, And he showed me Joshua the high priest. This is a vision standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan, standing at his right side to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? Now Joseph was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, Take off his filthy clothes. And he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin, and I will put fine garments on you. And I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him, while the angel of the Lord 
stood by. See, what shame does in your life is it accuses you. What shame does is it defines you by singular moments that you're ashamed of, that you feel as if this is not the best version of who I am. This is actually a very broken version of who I am. And if anyone ever saw this part of me, I wouldn't know what to do. Shame says that you are the sum of all of your past mistakes. And probably even right now as I'm talking about shame, there's a, a moment that comes into your mind. There's a person, there's a relationship, there's, there's, there's sin in your life. There's mit- times where you've just missed the mark or, or messed up and it's culminated into this big pot of shame in your life that you've been carrying and that God wants to release you from. And what I love about this, this, this scene in the story is that there's Satan accusing him of all, of all that he had done, but then also on his behalf, there was an advocate. You have an advocate. And the advocate is Jesus. Jesus wants to remove, like, just like this story, remove everything that was filthy, everything that was dirty, everything that made you feel worthless, and remove that and replace it with something beautiful, with his righteousness, with his goodness, with his faithfulness. All of your imperfections covered by the perfection of, Je- of Jesus. Shame is, is the core part of what steals from you a healthy self-image. It makes it virtually impossible to love yourself, to love other people, to even love God when you're living in shame, stuck in shame. Are you stuck in shame right now? Is this something that has just been looming over you in your life that you're just afraid to deal with? It's time for you to exchange that. It's time to to realize that you now have the permission to let go, to start healing, to allow God to, 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 to touch that part of your heart that you feel so ashamed of. Don't devalue what God treasures. Don't devalue what God treasures. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, it says, If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. The Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. So when God sees you, he does not see your shame. He does not see your sin. He does not see your folly, your faults, all your fears. What he sees, he sees someone who has been covered by the sacrifice of Jesus, redeemed by the blood of God. And now you have been freed to live away from your shame and in right relationship with God. Shame has no hold. Shame has no no chance against the grace of God in your life. But you need to fix your internal narrative. You need to keep it in check because everything inside of you has been taught to say, no, you're not worth it. You're not worth it. Look what, you remember what you did that one time? You're not worth it. And God says, you wanna know how much you mean to me? You wanna know how much at like how much value I see in you. you. You aren't just someone who was made in my image meant to reflect my glory. You're someone worth dying for. That's what God sees when he sees you. You see somebody who has intrinsic value, who has a calling for their life. And, and it's not saying uh, that you, you need to start loving yourself doesn't mean that you need to live a selfish life. It, needs, it means that you need to start seeing yourself clearly. You need to see yourself the way God sees you. And until you do that, you're, you're never going to find out or see the purposes that he has for your life. You're going to get so caught up in the pressures of this world and even more so your past. You can't walk into the future that God's calling you into when all you're doing is looking behind over your shoulder. So I wonder how long it's going to take. Hopefully this moment is something that can trigger inside of you enough courage to start maybe believing again or start believing for the first time. 
and, and apathy, what it does is it hardens our hearts from the truth of God. And right now I'm just saying, look inside of yourself and, and ask God the honest question. Maybe that's just the practical takeaway from just the short time that we've had together, is that you would just have the, the, the willingness and the openness to ask God to soften your heart, to start changing the way that you talk to yourself, to start changing the way that you receive his love. We want nothing more for you than not just to love yourself, but to love God and to walk into the freedom that there is, away from shame, away from pride, and into the life that God's called you to be. Let's pray together. Jesus, um, we love you so much. We pray that for anyone who just feels bound by shame, anyone who feels bound um, by the pride in their life, past mistakes that they've made, God, we pray right now, Lord, that they would be reminded that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that you actually unlock for us the ability to know you, to see ourselves more clearly. I'm praying that they would have the resiliency that they need in their life to just move forward, God. And to heal the internal narrative that they have. We believe all these things can only happen through your strength, through your spirit, Jesus. In your name, amen.